Many of the most ancient stone structures we cover here upon our channel, whose origins undoubtedly span far back into Earth's antiquity, in our experience, are often, unfortunately, due to the rigid, unchanging conclusions set forth in regards to academic history just over a century ago, will not only encounter reoccurring anomalies, suspiciously precise stone cuts, unexplainable by any of our lesser capable yet institutionally permitted ancestors with whatever said civilization were to equip with, yet regardless and rather arrogantly refuse to budge in terms of the official tale of events. This then means that anyone with critical thinking skills will continually and often come across feats of ancient engineering somehow accomplished by said people, enormous and perfectly refined stone carvings that, according to, and as a result of, academic institutions' reluctance to budge must be explained away as having, somehow, once been cut and created with tools of a soft metal. Yet in reality, this is simply an impossibility. It is a lie only possible on paper, yet this lie is mass-printed all over our planet. It is in Mystery History's opinion that these advanced and thus inexplicable features which litter our videos in abundance are each and all clear evidence of a far more advanced yet far more ancient and thus lost civilization. Additionally, another reoccurring theme anyone exploring this confusing, enigmatic, and although little shared, ever-growing list of ancient, unexplainable structures, no funded individual dare attempt to explain the methodology of said build but will find that they are, instead, extremely eager to willingly and immorally seal the fate of these marvelous buildings' legacy, condemning them to the ever-growing list we like to call the label of the tomb. A ruthless, willing, and well-funded army of researchers, tasked with exploring any archaeology from a very specific time period, thus we posit any re-inhabitation of said site's archaeology is used nearly always absent an explanation as to how they built said buildings, depending the construction on whom is most convenient. An eventual attribution for all of these exquisite and quite possibly incredible important historical relics as simply tombs. We have in the past touched upon false doors, claimed witchcraft, which seemingly permeated all ancient civilizations worldwide from littering the 1,000-ton-plus toppled obelisk of Aksum, exposing the advanced ruins in Ethiopia, but also the Giza Plateau among countless other locations on Earth seemingly spanning many lost civilizations' ruins. And the site which is the focus of this video, we feel, is one of the most awe-inspiring false doors on Earth. When it comes to false doors, a sheer mountain side carved away perfectly not only creating a tomb of master stonework in a time of history, when this should have simply been impossible. Its false door, however, proof of its far greater age, leading into some incredible landscape, makes it a site which undoubtedly adds intrigue to the mystery of the false door, and whether we will ever unlock its fullest potentials. We previously covered one in Peru in a subject-specific film. Link will be at the end. Local legend claimed it was once a portal. It is clearly a false door, as seen all over the world, just like that of Axum, seemingly laser-cut into the hillside. What we found highly compelling, however, was that it had been cut into the only mountainside in all of Peru to have possessed an extremely rare earth element in the stone, which we now use in high-end transmission of radio, sound, and light waves. Every day, we get closer and closer to finally understanding what these doors were. Kapilikea Rock Tomb is not only an extraordinarily well-located ruin, located in Kirkdilim, 27 kilometers north of Churum, Turkey, on a rocky, steep, rough-formed, thus hard bedrock. It is clearly a relic of one of the lost civilizations we have long been studying, not only due to the precision of the stone cut, the masterful choice of location, but also the use of the false door, in our opinion, proves beyond doubt that this ruin was made by the same lost civilization or civilizations as we are currently pursuing an identity and a legacy for here upon our channel. 
a civilization once capable of moving and building with 1,000-plus ton megalithic stones, possibly even the builders of or the descendants of the true group of people responsible for the Great Pyramids themselves. Many things which do not add up are often overlooked or dismissed. But in our experience, the ancient ruins never lie if you let them tell the story and explore said relics with a quest to understand what they may still be able to tell us. It does not matter what others may claim, for as we know, the truth will always prevail. And that is something we find highly compelling. Due to the rigidity of academic opinion regarding the history of man, many sites are stubbornly attributed to civilizations that were simply incapable of their construction. Mausoleums, temples, and other structures found all over the world often carved straight out of the bedrock with such artistic vision and accuracy, they rival even the artistic masterpieces created during the Renaissance. Temples such as the Kalesh, among many others found within India alone, that were somehow carved straight out of rock hillsides with stunning precision. Such astonishing feats of ancient stonework that to claim they were created by the currently academically attested cultures, we feel is absurd. Not only are many of these ancient, unexplainable structures built with the utilization of seemingly impossibly huge megalithic blocks, but they also display masonry techniques and refined stone carving that we believe the only logical explanation for their origins is that of a once highly capable, technologically advanced civilization's workmanship. For example, our recent research surrounding the Basda cave system, the confirmed quarry for the nearby ancient ruins of Haran, with a focus on the stone cutting tool marks found within, and indeed, the easily identifiable shape of the blocks built from this undertaking we perceive as a possible missing link now connecting a vast number of ancient ruins around the world. Due to it being confirmed as the quarry for Haran, and the unique shape of the stones used in the construction of the site, we have been able to link this signature style of block cutting to many other sites around the globe. With the astonishing ancient rock-cut structures found at the site known as Myra, now also identified as one of these sites, predictably claimed as tombs by academia. And although there is no substantiated written reference for Myra existing before it was listed as a member of the Lycian League in 168 BC, the stonework still existing at the site, thanks to ours and New Earth's efforts, could be seen as that of the same as many other ancient sites, also possessing these signature blocks found at Hassan, which we strongly feel, due to a large amount of evidence, as having a pre-Diluvian origin. These identifiable features most notably found within the theater of Myra, and although the flooring has been robbed out, which we presume was once polygonal, just like that of the flooring found still existing at the ancient amphitheater of Delphi. Additionally, the precision with which these pertained tombs were cut into the sheer cliff face is to us clear evidence of a civilization's work far more capable than that of the academically claimed builders, the Iron Age Lycians, or even the Greeks. We suspect, like the many other incredibly built ancient sites around the world, this site was merely re-inhabited by later civilizations, utilized and indeed claimed as their work. Not only due to an absence of documentation of their existence prior to this habitation, making academia's claim to their creators an easy assertion to make, but also due to the perceived illusionary capabilities that these monuments would have lent to the Greeks and prior to them the Lycians' architectural skills. There are two necropolis of these rock-cut temple fronts found at Myra. The first being the river necropolis, and the second being the ocean necropolis. The best-known tomb in the river necropolis is the lion's tomb, also called the painted tomb. This name given to the tomb by traveler Charles Fellows, who in 1840 found the tomb to have still been colorfully painted in red, yellow, and blue. 
Lycia is known to history since the records of ancient Egypt and the Hittite Empire in the Late Bronze Age. It was populated by speakers of the Luwian language group. Written records began to be inscribed in stone in the Lycian language after Lycia's involuntary incorporation into the Acumented Empire during the Iron Age, with ancient sources indicating that an even older name for the region was Alope. How can academics continue to claim that such precisely cut stone structures were the work of such primitive cultures? We believe it to be far more logical to presume that these precision-cut structures were already in existence during these eras, and probably the reason for the area's initial inhabitation. Who built the ancient rock-cut structures of Myra? Were they, as we postulate, created by the same advanced lost civilization we have linked through the stonework to sites the world over? It is undoubtedly an incredible location, with particular identifiable features, which we find highly compelling.